So now the plot has been displaced from its equilibrium position by the maximum possible amount, which we call as the amplitude, capital A. Okay. So at this position, the restoring force will be maximum or minimum? At that A. From its equilibrium position, it has been pulled to the maximum. So you also experience a spring. If you pull it more and more and more and more, the restoring force of the spring will also be proportionately more. Right? So the restoring force is maximum. So what can you predict about its acceleration? Acceleration. So this is on a smooth surface, okay? On a smooth surface. By definition, smooth surface means friction will be friction will be zero. Zero. So the only force acting on it is the restoring force, which is the spring force. And look at the observe the direction of spring force or restoring force compared to the direction of displacement. Acceleration. Displacement is in this direction. If you if you consider positive axis, positive direction and negative axis, negative direction, displacement will be having what sign? Positive. Positive. And at that same time the restoring force is negative. Negative. Okay? So now the motion of a spring a mass attached to a horizontal spring which oscillates back and forth along a straight line is a typical example of simple harmonic motion and what did we observe? When this object oscillates its acceleration is always opposite to its displacement. So if this had so due to the acceleration it will slow down first when you increase it from here it will speed up its velocity will start from rest agreed? You put it in here, you release it Release it at rest. Due to acceleration, it will speed up. The velocity will increase. All this time, the velocity and acceleration are in the same direction, so it will speed up. Whenever the velocity and acceleration are in the same direction, it will speed up. So at the equilibrium position, its velocity will be maximum. Maximum. But the moment it crosses over to this side, the displacement has become positive or negative. Negative. When displacement has become negative, the spring has now become compressed. It is no longer at natural length, it is compressed. So when it is compressed, the spring will try to pull, push it back to the equilibrium position. So now the restoring force will be in this direction. So when displacement is negative, the restoring force is positive. Agreed? So now velocity is negative, but acceleration is positive. So whenever velocity and acceleration are opposite in direction, what will happen? It will slow down. So now it will start slowing down. And finally it will come to rest at the same distance of A. Now X will be minus A. At this position, it will finally come to rest. And at this position, the restoring force is also maximum. maximum. And towards the center. So again it will start accelerating. So now again velocity will be positive, acceleration will be positive. So it will speed up again. So this will happen back and forth. Since friction is zero, work done by friction is zero, so no energy is lost. So energy will keep changing back and forth between these two forms. Kinetic and spring production. Kinetic spring production. Okay, so now from this we can summarize the key point or feature of simple harmonic motion. The feature is the acceleration which is supposed to be net force by mass. So in this case it will be spring force by mass. And in this case spring force will be proportionate to displacement. Such that spring force is minus kx. And this is called as Hooke's constant. <coughs> or spring constant or stiffness constant ok so greater the value of k for a small displacement x you need more restoring force the spring will exert a more restoring force or in other words you need to apply more force to stretch it by an extension x 
So a stiffer spring will have a greater stiffness constant and a weaker spring will have lesser stiffness constant. Okay? So the minus sign tells you that the restoring force is opposite to displacement. So understood minus k and x. So this is the if if the restoring force which pulls an object back to the equilibrium position is always opposite to displacement and proportional to displacement, then what do you, what happens to its acceleration? So acceleration will become minus kx by m. So minus k by m x. So acceleration also becomes proportionate to displacement and opposite to displacement. So this is the main condition. So acceleration is equal to g square x by dt square if it is equal to minus some constant times x that is the condition for SHM. Ok? Clear? So in our acceleration is proportional to displacement and opposite to displacement it is it will result in SHM. Now our goal is how do we describe the displacement of this particle, this mass attached to the screen from its equilibrium position as a function of time. So if I release it from equilibrium position with a certain velocity of v max, then after as I observe it, it will keep going, its position will increase till a, then again it will decrease to 0, then it will go to minus a, like this it changes with time. So how do I describe it? I can release it at t equal to 0 from any position. I can release it from equilibrium position with a velocity, then also it will oscillate, or I can release it from amplitude position at rest, then also it will keep oscillating forever. Or I can release it from any point in between. So whatever point I release, if I use a, if I take a video of that motion and use tracker to track the position, I will get a position versus time graph. So what equation should I fit so that it will exactly fit the tracker data. That is the question. Okay. So for that the clue is in this circular motion. So let me erase all this. So what is the condition for SHM? Condition for SHM is that the object which is executing SHM should experience a restoring force yeah. towards its equilibrium position which is directed always towards the equilibrium position and it's proportional to the displacement from equilibrium position. So because of this condition we set on restoring force and assuming that the restoring force is the net force, this condition applies to acceleration also. Okay? okay. So now what we say is to describe such SHM all SHM motion can be described as a projection of uniform circular motion. Write this down. All <coughs> SHM motion can be described as a projection of uniform circular motion. So the key here is uniform circular motion. We have already learned what is uniform circular motion. It means the speed is constant. <coughs> Radius is constant for an object executing circular motion. So let's take this white ball here which is going with a speed say u which is going to be constant. So at every point its speed will be the same u. And the radius we will take it to be the amplitude of the SHM motion. So whatever SHM motion is happening, it will have an amplitude, maximum displacement during its entire oscillation. That amplitude becomes the radius of the uniform circular motion, whose projection may be used. So now what do I mean by projection? So let us say this is the object which is oscillating and this is the object which is going in circular motion. I align the center of the circular motion to the equilibrium position which is x equal to 0. Now imagine I am shining a parallel beam of light like this. 
If I shine a parallel beam of light like this, as this object keeps going in a circular motion, what will happen to its shadow which is cast on a screen? So suppose this is a screen. Can you tell me how the shadow will move on the screen? It will go back and forth. So the position of the shadow will exactly coincide with the position of this horizontal spring bar system. That's what I mean by projection of uniform circular motion. This 2D motion of the ball in a circle has become projected onto a 1D, surface, 1D line. This one single axis or a screen represents 1D, one dimension. So when the, so let us say, I release the block from here. If I release the block from here, the shadow should originally be here. So the ball should be exactly at the ambiguous position, at this position. So now the shadow would lie here. Now, after t equal to 0, if this block is going to come towards the equilibrium position, the shadow has to move towards the equilibrium position. So now it can happen in two ways. The ball could be rotating like this, the ball could be moving in a circular ball motion like this, or like this. If it is here or as well as here, the shadow would be coinciding with the position of the ball. So how do you know which is the correct direction of its circular motion? How will you figure out the correct direction? Both direct, both cases, it, its speed is u only. Here also speed is u in this direction, here speed is u in this, in this direction. So the way we say is, right now it is coming towards this side. So if you take it like this, after it crosses from like this, and once it is here, I think both ways it seems to be able to describe, right? Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll stick to convention that angle is increasing with time. Okay? So if angle is increasing with time, we consider a circular motion in anti-clockwise direction. Okay? So we'll consider that from here, always angle will increase with time from any initial position. So in that case, if it is at this position, after, at a later time when it comes back here, it is moving like this. So it has covered an angle of theta. Okay? So if you release an object from rest here, after some time t, when the block comes still here, correspondingly, the ball in the circular motion has covered an angular displacement of theta. Theta is the angular displacement which was covered in time t. Yes? Clear? So now, if theta is the angular displacement in time t, mm -hmm. displacement is given by speed into time. So if angular displacement will be given by what, what velocity? Angular, angular velocity into time. Theta. So theta will be given by omega t. Okay? Mm -hmm. But what is omega? Total angular displacement by total time taken. Agreed? That will be 2 pi by time period into t. Agreed? Yeah. Now, from this we need to get the position of the shadow, which is this point, which is this distance. Do you get it? This is the position, right? It started from here, after time t the block is here. Mm -hmm. So if I want its x position, this is the x position. Agreed? Mm -hmm. So whatever is the position p of the particle in its circular motion, its x coordinate, p will have an x and a y coordinate. Its x coordinate gives the position of the block mm -hmm. in horizontal SHM. Yeah. So if this is x, and the radius of the circle is amplitude A and the angular displacement is theta. What is X? This is 90 degree. This is 90 degree. So X by A is cos theta. Adjacent by hypotenuse is cos theta. Anand? Yes sir. Either listen from the beginning or don't confuse me. So cos theta would be x by a. So x is a cos theta. Agreed? 
So that's why we wanted how does x vary with time. So now put this theta inside this expression for theta, you put it in this. Put this theta here. So what do you get? A equals 2 by Yes. So it will give you x equals a cos theta which is a cos omega t which is a cos 2 pi by time period into t. Did you use omega t? Yeah. Omega is a constant. So just think, omega is supposed to be angular velocity, but here it is not moving in any circle. It is moving in a straight line, back and forth, and yet we use omega in its expression. So you should not get confused. You should not think how can an object which is going back and forth in a straight line have angular velocity? Yes, you mean that it's projection. So angular velocity omega is a parameter in the mathematical equation which is able to give us the exact position of the object in one, one dimensional SHM and if it is going back and forth very fast this omega value will become very high if it is going very slowly omega will be very less so the time period is hiding inside this parameter omega and how is time period hiding inside omega if you use the definition of omega as 2 pi by time period, there you get the time period. So now you get an idea how to fit the data, experimental data. So what is the small t? Small t is the actual time, the current time. It's at the value seconds. of the current time. And if it's at 3 seconds. Then small t will be 3. And you take and you take x, means you take the displacement out from this equilibrium. Yes. So x is the displacement from the equilibrium position. Now, let's check this equation whether it satisfies. At t equal to 0, what will happen to the angle? 0. 0. Mm -hmm. Cos of 0 is? 1. one Cos of 0 is 1. Point multiplied by a is a. So, this equation always tells you that the initial displacement is a. So, it starts from, the, from one of the It ends. starts from this end. So only if you release the object from here at t equal to 0, you can use this equation. So oh, you won't oscillate otherwise? It will be no, even if you release it from equilibrium position, it will oscillate if you give it an initial velocity. Hmm. I have to give it an yeah, initial yeah. velocity, then it will oscillate. Okay? So right now this equation has a limitation that it can only describe motion which started from end position of this. So how will it describe motion which starts from some other random position? For that, we make a modification. We say that at time t equal to 0, the initial angular displacement of this object okay, was not <coughs> a. It could be some other value. Right? So let me just draw it neatly again, since it is a bit congested. To explain, that is called the phase constant. So you need to understand that. So let us say it was here. In this many questions can be asked to, to check your concept. Suppose it was here and moving in this direction. Okay? Mm -hmm. That means its shadow would be Now tell me, would, is it that when it is moving in this direction, is it in this position or is it in this position? Yes. It can be any one of them. It cannot be any one of them. Why? You have to imagine that the angle is always increasing with time. Oh, increasing. So its rotation is only going to be okay, anti clockwise. Right. So is it is no, this it's position it's corresponding to A or B? A. It's no, it's increasing with time. Uh, it's going here. To be, so, so is it A or B? The current position is A or B in the circle? A. 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 Because since it's moving this side, after at a later time it will be here. Mm -hmm. If you are taking it to be B, 
at a later time it will be here. So the shadow will not follow the object. But if you take it to be here, at a later time it will be here. So the shadow can follow the object. Okay? So if it is moving towards this side, you said it is at A. So let's first do that and see what will, how we can correct this equation. So that means at t equal to 0, it is here. So the position of the object in the circular motion is here. So the angle which it makes is this. And this is supposed to be 0, 0 angle. Mm -hmm. So this is in the backward direction, downward direction, opposite direction. So we will call it minus 5. It's a negative angle. Mm -hmm. So at t equal to 0, instead of angle being 0, which is what will happen if you put t equal to 0, mm -hmm. the angle is supposed to be minus 5. So if you put that, minus 5, then cos of minus 5 would be the x component of that, which is this. Are you getting it? Mm. So you will get the correct value of x again. So you just change the angle. Right? Yes. So the correction would be x equals a cos of omega t plus 5, where 5 is the phase constant. It is a value which is a constant which tells you the phase angle at time t equal to 0 to make the correction for whatever position it starts from. Ok, now the question is for Anand. Suppose its velocity was in this direction. What would be the position in the circle? B. It would be B. So what would be the angle? Plus 5. So it will be like this. So this would be the phi angle. Become plus phi. So t equal to 0, it will be a cos omega t plus phi. So in this phi, when I substitute here, suppose this is like 70 degrees, I would have substituted phi is equal to minus 70 for a, phi is equal to plus 70 for b. Or, I mean, correspondingly in radians. The degree has to be in radians, convert into radians. Okay, can you get the gap? Okay, now let's run the simulation and see that it actually <coughs> the projection works. So you have to follow this this curve. Okay, when the object is here, the amplitude is maximum. The position is at the maximum amplitude. So this is the cost function. So just see how it moves. So it's doing it slow motion. So as you can see the x coordinate is decreasing. All of this. And after it has covered one fourth of the circle, x coordinate can be given position zero. Now it's going to minus amplitude. Right? So this x coordinate is the projection in the projection of circle. No, they are they are just showing how the y coordinate is your track. If you think that you are following a vertical spring motion, you can use the y coordinate. Basically, the x and y coordinates individually follow a Okay. Okay. Now. So either sign or cos function both can be used to describe the position of position of an object in SHM. Right? So we will ignore the phase constant now to keep the equation simple. So this means the object was at which position at t equal to 0. If I am using sign. Here. Sign. Hmm. <coughs> 
zero position, equilibrium position. Okay? Because at t equal to zero, sine of zero is zero. So zero multiplied by a will be zero. So x will be at zero position or equilibrium position. Now velocity of this object would be dx by dt. So the value is I could have used cos also. It wouldn't make any difference. The relation between x velocity acceleration would be same only. Okay? And I can always use the phase constant try to adjust the angle so that it starts falling correctly. So if we differentiate this the derivative of anything which has a constant in it, the constant will come out. So A derivative of sine function. Agreed? Now derivative of sine function is cos function. So it will become cos of that function. Now this function is itself a function of time. So you have to differentiate again with respect to time. So derivative of omega t is omega. omega. So that omega I am writing here. So this becomes the velocity. So if you observe this qualitatively, this is the constant. This becomes the new amplitude for the velocity function. So velocity will reach a maximum magnitude of a yeah. omega. Are getting it? Yeah. From this, it confirms your original circular motion thing. V equals R omega. If something is going in uniform circle, the radius is the amplitude. Yeah. Okay? So the tangential velocity will be R omega. So it comes from this. Okay. Now acceleration is dv by dt. So derivative of this with time. So again this constant will be as it is. And then derivative of cos function is minus sine function. So it become minus sine of omega t. And then, and then you have to differentiate omega, omega t also. Omega. So you will again get omega. So it becomes a omega square. So now again you find that this acceleration function has a maximum amplitude of a omega square and it varies as a sine function. So from IV exam point of view, you will be expected to know how to plot x, v, a in the same graph. So if you start with the cost function? If you should start with the cost function, the corresponding things will shift by phase angle of pi, uh, pi by 2. Both of them will become negative. So you okay, want to try that also? <laughs> No, where they will match is when you find the relation between x and a. So let's do that next step and then we'll come back. Oh, so you don't use the cos function? No, we can use cos also. It will be the same result. I'll show you. See, x is a sine of omega t. You have here also a sine of omega t. Yes? Here also you have a sine of omega t. Mm -hmm. So it becomes acceleration is minus omega squared x. So this is the so again acceleration is proportional to displacement and opposite to displacement because of this minus sign. Okay? And if you compare it with acceleration, we already got minus k by m into x. Do you remember this? Yes. So the force. Yes. If you compare these two equations, you get a relation for omega, the constant omega in terms of the properties of the system. <coughs> K is the spring constant, if it's a spring mass system, M is the mass of this at object attached to the spring. So what do you get? W omega squared, call it omega squared, not W. So omega squared is K by M. Omega is root of K by M. This gives you some physical insight into how it oscillates. So how is omega equal to k by m? Uh, how is it equal? You remember this? How we derived this? Do you remember how we derived this? Or you k, k is equal to uh, m is equal to k x minus k x. Acceleration is net force by mass. So this k x is net force. Oh yeah. 
of the organics. And then we are comparing this and acceleration this with this acceleration. Understood now? So now the physical insight is coming from here. How omega tells you how fast it oscillates. So how fast it oscillates depends on the elasticity of the medium or elastic property of water object is oscillating. Elasticity means the ability to come back to equilibrium position when the deforming force is removed. So if the stiff spring is very stiff, if you, if you remove the deforming force, it will come back very quickly. So the oscillation will become very fast. Are you getting it? So stiffness constant is more, omega is more. So if stiffness constant is more, omega is more. But then the mass of that object is producing the inertia or resistance to change in state of motion. So if it's a heavy object, if, a, if an elephant is attached to the spring, even though the spring is stiff, it will have a tough time making the elephant move back and forth, change its velocity continuously. Whereas if it's a table tennis ball is attached, it will oscillate very fast. So inertia will always oppose the uh, frequency, how fast it will oscillate. So that's why more the inertia, lesser the angular frequency. So correspondingly, instead of frequency, you can compare it with time period. So this omega gives you time period. It also gives you the actual frequency, which is 1 by time period. By, by yes. So omega is 2 pi by time period. And 1 by time period is frequency. So it's also 2 pi f. So omega is proportional to the frequency, or frequency is proportional to omega. Time period is inversely proportional to omega. So in the exam questions, you can find out any of this. So if they say something is oscillating 20 times per second, how will you find omega, Anant? Something is, a uh, spring mass system is oscillating 20 times per second. 20 hertz. Time period would be 20 hertz. 20 times per oh, second. So then frequency would be 20. Yes, so f is 20. So you can find omega like that. Understood? Now, even if you start with a cos omega t, you will get the same relation a equals minus omega square x. That's what I wanted to do. Can you do it and check for yourself? Even if you start with a, you put a cos omega t. No, but this is negative and then you reach negative a w. Then acceleration becomes negative a omega square x cos omega t. Yeah, again if you see the. Okay. No, again if you check this, again you will be able to express a as minus omega square x. Yeah, yeah, so that is what matters, no? Okay, doesn't matter. How does A depend on X? That is the that is the general information. So the sign cos doesn't matter. Yeah, that is like a sign convention. That won't affect. Clear? Hmm. Okay, so now that you have got X, B, A as a function of time, the next thing which in the exam they may test you is how will you express it as a function of position? Can you figure it out? Tarush. X, V, A as a function of position. No, x as a function of position is obviously nothing, that's a meaningless question. Velocity and acceleration as a function of position. How will you get velocity as a function of position? What? Acceleration we already got, a equals minus omega square x. Omega, oh, okay, you have it. Omega, uh, x by t. Omega x, you will have to change the phase. Uh, cos w t plus uh, 90 will be. So what you can do is you can use. So you can, you can w. write cos in terms of sign, right? Very good. Go Excellent. So x is a function of sign. Mm -hmm. So if you want to express velocity as a function of x, try to bring, convert this into sign. sign. So we use cos theta is root of 1 minus mm -hmm. sine square theta. If we do that, what happens? So can't use cos theta is equal to uh, 1 minus sine square minus. of Okay? So can't use Now, if you look at that unit circle <coughs> Let us say this was theta 
this was x, this was y, this was a. Okay? Now, this uh, inside this root here, this 1, right? So, 1 minus sin square theta is cos square theta. Agree? So, what is sin theta actually? y by a. Agree? What was I trying to say? You don't know it. Cos of omega t is x by a. So oh, directly you can write here as x by a, right? So can't you express cos as 90 minus uh, sine 90 minus omega t? That, that, yeah. that would be a simpler form, won't it? Right. So if you write this cos of omega t as x by a, it becomes a omega into x by a. becomes omega x. So that's, I think that is sufficient. So we got v as a function of x. v is omega x, a is minus omega square x. Okay? Why do you know? I don't understand why you wrote it. You give it You given the y position, no? So I'll be writing in terms of x. No, suppose I want to know how does the velocity change with displacement. Displacement so, of what? Displacement of the object, which is in, exiting in SHM. So, it's exiting SHM in the y direction, no, not x. Yeah, the, no, in the x-axis, we have described everything as x, right? No, a sign of equal to equal. According to a sign of omega t, it's the y direction. It, no, no, no. What, what this means is, we are describing the motion of an object which started from the equilibrium position with some velocity in the rightward direction. So at t equal to 0, its position was 0. x was 0. <coughs> so now, as the x changes in value from 0 to a and to minus a, how does the velocity change is the question. Okay, so what, what do we get? Actually this goes, uh, this is coming out, sign is not coming out correct, no? Wait, there is some simple way I am missing that trick. If it is root of 1 minus sin square of omega t, okay, what is sin of omega t? sin theta is y by a. So this root of a square and a will cancel. So a over. So a over. Hmm? A okay. minus y square upon a over. This a will cancel out with this a. So that will be a minus y square upon a. Root of a square minus y square by a square. It will be a minus y square upon a. Right? Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. 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 
साइन ऑफ ओमेगा टी वॉट इज साइन ऑफ ओमेगा टी डिस्केस ओके दी लुक हियर साइन ऑफ ओमेगा टी इज गोइंग टू बी एक्स बाई ए साइन इज गोइंग टू बी वाई बाई नो नो लुक एट दिस इक्वेशन Here I am saying x x a sin omega t. Okay. What I mean by this is when t is zero, the x value is zero. Okay. So if if we are if we accept this equation x is a sin omega t, <coughs> then sin of omega t is x by a. Agree? Do you agree? Now here we have velocity is a omega cos of omega t, but cos is root of one minus sine square. Agree? Now one minus sine square of omega t in which sine of omega t is x by a. Okay? So sine square of omega t would be x square by a square. Agree? So in this case, it becomes a omega into root of one minus x square by a square. Agreed? Now it will follow a omega into root of a square minus x square by a square. You get velocity equals omega into root of a square minus x square. You get it? So x would be equal to root of a square minus x square. What? X. Ah, uh, oh. X would be equal to root of a square minus x square by that logic. X is equal to? You also derive that b is equal to omega x, right? No, no, no. That is not the correct thing. That is not the correct thing. This is the correct thing. <coughs> What was it trying to do? E equals. So you substituted cos omega t by x by. In that, it will be the sine omega t uh, as by sine by. नहीं इसमें इस कंसिडर करें साइन ओमेगा डी एस एक्स बाय अभी नहीं है बी इज इक्वल ओमेगा इसमें इस कंसिडर करें साइन ओमेगा डी एस बाय बाय हाँ डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड और यू आर कंफ्यूज व्हाट इज कंफ्यूज साइन ओमेगा डी एस साइन ओमेगा डी वुड बी बाय बाय एक्स बाय राइट नो बाय दैट सी That you considering the energy of the uniform circular motion. No? Yeah. Here, here we are considering the displacement of the object in the x direction. So sine omega t is x square directly. From the equation only, you find it directly sine omega t is x square. X is equal to a sine omega t. Sine omega t is x square. See. Whatever is supposed to be y, I have called it x here. Theta would be that angle in uh, horizontal motion, right? This angle. No, the other one. Oh yeah. Theta would be that angle. See, when I say sine of omega t, I am representing this. That means. So then theta would be the other angle in the right angle triangle, upper one. No, it it is. Okay. So this is x and t is zero. Okay. We are using instead of cos omega t, we are using sine omega t. Means it should be we are we are actually tracking this motion. This motion. We are tracking the y motion. Yeah, we are tracking the y motion. Okay. 
Okay. Or we can take the phase constant to be a. Yeah, but we didn't use any phase constant here. No. The equation is cos omega t plus a cos omega t plus phi. Ah. So that phi can be uh, the phase constant. Yes. But since I didn't write it, if I'm you going to use a sin omega t, then in this circular motion, I'm tracking the y coordinate actually. Okay. If it's a cos omega t plus 90, <coughs> so it becomes a sin omega t. Yes. Yes. Are you following? X is equal to a cos omega t plus phi. Right? You can even use a sin omega t plus phi. All you need to do is adjust the phi value so that the equation exactly describes. Are you getting it? Right now, don't try to bring the circle into the picture now. Because if you use a sin of omega t, we are tracking this coordinate. The y coordinate. Because y is a sin theta. Okay? So at t equal to 0, it was at rest. And it, it was at equilibrium position at this position. And then as the angle increases, its position goes here, then comes down like this. Okay? So what I'm saying is, directly go from this equation itself. If you call, if you describe its to and from motion as x is a sin omega t, then automatically sin of omega t is x by a. And then if you replace it with, and then in velocity if you have cos, if you bring it back to sin form, then wherever you have sin omega t, you can replace it with x by a. And then you get end up with this. So now try to see the physical meaning of this equation. So what does it tell you? Whenever x reaches the maximum value, that is amplitude a, then what will happen to this term? Zero. It goes to zero, so velocity goes to zero. So this tells you that at a maximum at, at the amplitude position, object will come to rest. That is the kind of interpretation we wanted to have. Whereas if velocity was only as a function of time, we can't tell what will happen at amplitude. Agree? Yeah. Okay? And similarly, A is minus omega squared x. So the amplitude, the acceleration magnitude will be maximum when x reaches the maximum amplitude. Okay? And when x is 0, acceleration is 0. Okay. Now next is, we need to figure out how the energy changes during its motion. Kinetic energy, potential energy. Okay? So how will you find kinetic energy? Oh wait, to find potential energy you need to do the integration. Work done. So, I'll erase this. Force and displacement, right? Hmm? Yeah. So now let's find out the potential energy which will be present in a spring mass system when it has a displacement of x from its equilibrium position. So to do that, we'll use the fact that work done by conservative force is equal to minus of delta u. If a conservative force does some work, positive work, the potential energy of the system will decrease because it is using its potential energy to do the work, so it will decrease. <laughs> So we want to do our we want to set up our integration so that the object moves in the direction of increasing displacement, so that there won't be any sign coming issue. So if you do like that, if you say from here it goes by displacement of dx to a new position, from old position x it goes further by dx, but the restoring force was in the opposite direction, right? So instead of Getting confused with the sign, what we we'll do is, suppose I am given applied force of Fa and it's such that it moves at a constant velocity. 
Okay? That means my applied force is equal to the spring force in magnitude. Only then it will go at a constant velocity. Agreed? So whatever work I do with my applied force in moving it by a distance of dx, that work will get stored as potential energy. Agreed or not? Whenever an object is moved against the restoring force, work done in doing that is going to get converted into gaining potential energy. Agreed? So the small work done dw is this applied force. It, it would be minus of the applied force, right? Because applied force is sign is opposite, but I'm just going to say that whatever change in potential energy of okay, let's directly say q. The increase in potential energy will be equal to the magnitude of the work done by the applied force. Okay? Clear? So magnitude of the applied force is going to be equal to the magnitude of the spring force. The sign everything I have taken there in my diagram itself. Okay? So applied force will be doing positive work. So there is no negative sign anywhere. Applied force is in this direction, displacement is in this direction, it will do positive work, potential energy will increase. So du will increase, dx will increase. Fa dot dx both are in the same direction. So dot product will be just cos of 0 which is 1. So just magnitude of applied force, magnitude of displacement are multiplied. So the dot product is removed, just magnitudes being multiplied. And Fa magnitude is kx dx. So this way I have simplified it. Okay? So the total potential energy which has increased if we integrate it, the integral of this would give you the total gain in potential energy. K square by 2. Yes. So integral of kx dx is k will come out k square x square by 2. From 0 to a let us say. So it become k a square by half k a square. So this tells you the total change in potential energy when the object moves from the equilibrium position to the amplitude position. So it becomes half k a square and if it moves to an x position it will be half k x square. Okay? Clear to you? We will be talking about the potential energy right now. Yes. This is only for potential energy. This is not the total energy. No. So now what we will do is we will use conservation of energy. And we can also directly tell what is kinetic energy using this. Let's do both ways. From this kinetic energy is half m v squared. So it will be half m v squared would be mega squared into a squared minus x squared. Agree? Half k, so total would be half k x squared plus that. Yes. So now if you find total total energy, total energy is potential energy plus kinetic energy. So x is the maximum displacement possible. So this is the maximum kinetic energy, uh, maximum potential energy. So, uh, and actual potential energy at x is half k x squared. So if you are taking both a and x in the equation then x is the maximum displacement possible? No, x is the current displacement. Okay. a is the maximum possible displacement. Okay. So if you see here, kinetic energy can vary depending on the value of x. When x becomes equal to the amplitude, kinetic energy will become 0. When x becomes 0, kinetic energy will become maximum. Are you getting it? Yeah. So from this what is K max? K max is half M omega square A square. So total energy at any time when the displacement is X is Ux plus Kx. And what do you get? Half 
kx squared plus half m omega squared a squared minus half m omega squared x squared. Is. 
So in between it varies like this. Agreed? So this is the potential energy curve. And what about kinetic energy? When x is maximum, which is equal to amplitude, it becomes zero. So when it is minus there also it becomes zero. Agreed? Because minus a the whole square will become plus a square. So a square minus a square becomes zero. And when x is zero, it will have the maximum amplitude of half m half k a square. Which is this. So it will go like this. So in IB, it's from an IB exam point of view, you need to know how to draw this qualitative graph. Clear? So this covers SHL completely. Is in SHL the 9th chapter? Yes, 9 and uh, chapter 4. See, this is the basic to understand everything, waves, oscillations. So as an SL student, you are excused if you can forget, if you forget some of these equations, the final results. But you need to, you'll be tested on the qualitative aspects. But how can you understand qualitative aspects if you don't learn the equation part? So you have to learn both. Okay? Now, now that we have studied how one particle oscillates, now let's see what equation will describe a travelling wave. Okay?
Okay, this response graph, what are, what happens is it, it takes x axis to be x as the variable, y axis to be y as the variable. If I change it to t and plot, what happens? Okay, it doesn't have any problem. Okay. So now a cos of omega t. Now if I change this omega as time period. And if you add T and L, then both the side will always be right. 0 to 10. So this is this has become the equation of a traveling wave. Did you see that? A wave which is traveling. So what happens if you change capital T? Change the cap, change the time period. period. Okay? Frequency would change. The frequency would change, yes. Time is also extending till infinity. So L will be the new 
as you go along exercises for a given time of frequency density. So if you want it to go towards right, it will be minus, it will move towards right. You see? There will become a traveling lane towards right. If you make it plus, it will become a traveling lane towards left. So, we are, fin we are finishing with the equation for a traveling lane towards right or left. It is just A cos of. So, this 2 pi by lambda is called as K. It's still qualitative K, no? SLP is qualitative, SLP is quantitative. This is the equation for a traveling wave. Sir, this last year. This k is 2 pi by lambda. Omega is 2 pi by 10 pi. If minus means moves in this direction, plus means moves towards left. Okay? So, no, if you see, it's a, it's a mathematical property that, see, as x, um, if you put a minus sign, and that the time is going to evolve, time is going to increase, the whole wave pattern will shift towards left. You have to spend some time thinking why it happens. With evolution of time, why does the entire waveform shift towards left? If the